there's a global war going on, and it's not a typical one that involves only the foot soldiers and the roaring thunder of high-energy munitions. The shadow wars of the 21st century are being conducted in the terrestrial, aerial, maritime, subterranean and extraterrestrial battle space, which involve the maximum use of economic, political, kinetic, psychological, chemical, biological, cyberspace and electromagnetic warfare. The Western Deep State is seeking a full-spectrum dominance. The Eastern Alliance is waging a full-spectrum countermeasure. This is the covert hybrid World War III. The Western Deep State's quest for full-spectrum dominance, amidst an advancing multipolar world. Who will win in the war between hegemony and multipolarity? When the Eastern Alliance was formed out of many sub-alliances which came before it, it explored many ways of defeating the beast in all its various manifestations, for good. ISIS fighters appear to be in possession of U.S. supplies and weapons intended for Kurdish allies. They claim that U.S. planes airdropped the goods and that the wind just simply carried them over into ISIS-controlled territory. In the propaganda video, a masked man displays what they call spoils of war, ranging from American hand grenades to small rocket rounds and other supplies that could be used against the Kurdish forces along the border city. Now, the U.S. Aside from ending the CIA terror operations in Syria and other soft targets around the world, China-led bloc also sought to end the dominance of the fiat United States dollar from international trade exchanges, and defeat the constantly rigged credit trading system of the City of London. The Eastern Alliance demanded that the Vatican Bank and all its derivative financial institutions must be reformed from their mafia money laundering schemes. This did not come easy for the reformists of course. Vladimir Putin using hybrid warfare, what's Putin actually accused of? Weaponizing information, cyber warfare. 
For a few terrifying hours in 2007, cyber attacks almost shut down the small Baltic state of Estonia. Hybrid warfare can refer to any form of aggression short of open invasion. And Putin's critics say that it's his path to world domination. As expected, the Khazarian Mafia, aka the Deep State, responded with all sorts of geopolitical tantrums to increase the value of its bargaining chips, including its successful regime change in Kiev, Ukraine. With anything less, help us. We need a leader. All our leaders have been intimidated. I'm afraid to show my face. There was one American journalist I saw on TV openly explaining just how exactly Maidan activists should take over buildings and what sort of strategies they should adopt. Occupation is not a rally. Occupation is not a march. Occupation is way more than that. You can have many marches every day, nothing happened. But when you do occupation, revolution starts. Every occupation, in order to survive and to be successful, it has to generalize itself. Every occupation that contained itself in its own barricades died. All the organizers of the color revolutions that I know have been to Ukraine. How can we go on saying that these protests are peaceful? I visit hospitals and see members from special force units with burns and broken limbs. These guys talk about how they were standing on Khrushchevsky Street and people were throwing bags filled with petrol at them. They created some special mixtures that are impossible to extinguish. For example, they take acetone and add foam plastic, receiving a kind of glue that will keep on burning until it completely burns itself out. And it's impossible to put out. These new technologies are being tested on people. And they are real people, just like those on the other side of the barricades, the very same Ukrainian guys. Have you been to Maidan? When I pass by it, I might stop and have a look, but it's absolutely pointless, meaningless. And it will get worse. That's what I think. I know the protesters receive $25 a day. My 18-year-old son went to Maidan in its early days and got paid for it, although it was never really peaceful. The United States government is creating acoustic and kinetic conflicts worldwide just so its benefactors in the arms industry could have a market to sell their death and destruction hardwares, and for the corporations to plunder the nation's wealth. after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got a 
come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years. Starting with Iraq, and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. We are here today in protest of the decision to bomb in Syria and to return medals given to us for our participation in previous attacks in the Middle East. A group of British war veterans threw down their medals at the gates of Downing Street in disgust at UK bombing in Syria. Last week, Parliament approved airstrikes on so-called Islamic State targets in Iraq and Syria. These belong to Veterans for Peace, which has 169 members from wars dating back to World War II. I don't understand what these medals are for or what they're supposed to mean. I joined the army as a teenager hoping to better myself. Yeah. And I believe I did that whilst on operations in Afghanistan. Yeah. One day whilst out on patrol, I was asked to blow a hole in a building, not knowing what was on the other side. I thought to myself, what if? What if it's a baby? What if it's there with its mother? What if it's there with the whole family? I would much rather live my life not having to deal with the consequences of what if. That is why I throw these medals back. What if every soldier past and present did this? If you look close enough at these medals, you can see the reflections of dead Iraqis. You can see the embers of Libya. And you can see the faces of the men and women of the British Armed Forces who didn't return and also those who did with lost limbs and shattered souls. I no longer require these medals. A Downing Street police officer picked up the discarded medals and said they would be well looked after. Ben Griffin, the group's spokesperson, said it was an emotional moment for the ex-soldiers and that veterans do not throw away their medals lightly. Listen to us, hear us, and think, was any of this worth it? No! no. Hell no! Do these medals thank us for a job well done? No! Do they mask lies, yes. corruption, yes. and abuse of young men and women yes. who swore to defend their country? Yes. We tear off this mask, hear us. My name is Iris Feliciano. I served in the Marine Corps and in January of 2002, I deployed in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. And I want to tell the folks behind us in these uh, enclosed walls where they build more policies based on lies and fear Woo! that we no longer stand for them. We no longer stand for their lies, their failed policies, and these unjust wars. Woo! Bring our troops home and end the war now. They can have these back. My name is Jason Hurd. I spent 10 years in the United States Army as a combat medic. I deployed to Baghdad in 2004. I'm here to return my Global War on Terrorism Service Medal in solidarity with the people of Iraq and the people of Afghanistan. I am deeply sorry for the destruction that we have caused in those countries and around the globe. I am proud to stand on this stage with my fellow veterans and my Afghan sisters. These were lies. I'm giving them back. All right.
To starve the beast, Russia continued its systematic and gradual departure from the Rothschild banking cartel by purchasing more gold bullion from the proceeds of its natural gas, military arms and organic agriculture industries, by requiring the West to pay their products with real currencies only. This resulted in a significant drop in the actual volume of raw materials delivery across continents, as reflected by the Baltic Dry Index in the last six years. The new requirement to pay only in sovereign currencies instead of the fiat dollar is what's keeping the United States forces in Afghanistan, a poor country in Asia that is still sitting on a $3 trillion worth of rare earth materials that the Western military-industrial complex is very much obsessed about. Rare earth materials such as, dysprosium, cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, and ytterbium, are all confirmed to be of high concentration in Afghanistan the last four years. The USGS and United States Department of Defense's Task Force for Business and Stability Operations have embarked on dozens of excursions to confirm the aerial findings, resulting in what are essentially treasure maps for mining companies. However, the Afghan government, having realized the dark intentions of the West, instead signed a 30-year, $3 billion contract with the China Metallurgical Group, a state-owned mining enterprise based in Beijing to exploit the Mzinac copper deposit. In short, the Chinese companies must be demonized too, along with the Russians, for throwing a monkey wrench in the deep state's grand plan to subjugate the Afghans, and rob the country like it did to the Africans for five centuries. Aside from that, and in order to end the war for oil and gas for good, China is embarking on a massive nuclear program that will end its dependence on foreign energy resources, and is now aiming to be the world's leading supplier of next-generation, meltdown-free nuclear reactors and components in 15 years. The plan is to build 30 new conventional nuclear plants, in addition to the 37 reactors operating today, as well as a variety of next-generation reactors, including thorium molten salt reactors, high-temperature gas-cooled reactors, which, like molten salt reactors, are both highly efficient and inherently safe, and sodium-cooled fast reactors, which can consume spent fuel from conventional reactors to make electricity. When this is realized, all energy wars will become irrelevant. This gradual move towards large-scale free energy systems is what's keeping the deep state on the edge. Bear in mind, the Russians are already there, that is they have designed the nuclear fission fusion hybrid reactors to safely and efficiently generate energy without the fear of Chernobyl-like meltdown. The Russian military-industrial sector was also resurrected over the years from its virtual death in the early 1990s, and has already retains its former glory.
светимся люди е, Пасха Господня Пасха, от смерти Божьих дни, и от земли к небеси Христос Бог нас приведет, о бедную поющая воскресенья день, просветимся люди. The game-changing $400 billion energy deal with China packed a lot of punch for this department. Along this line, the Russians just told the Western sanctions regime that its actions against Russia are futile and utterly stupid. The Russians have the technology to extract six times more oil in a given oil field. In the last few years, Germany and the rest of the EU have begun to realize that they're just shooting themselves in the foot by going with the deep state's counter-offensive regarding the continued imposition of geo-economic sanctions against the Eastern Alliance. The Russian military and industrial sectors benefit largely from the creativity and resilience of the country's unrestrained scientific community. The same sector that has been threatening the status quo in recent years. To seal the fate of the globalists, Russian scientists have announced the most economically feasible industrial method of producing any raw material needed to feed any specific industry. project about the transmutation of elements to other elements uh, by uh, biochemical methodolo methodology. And I think it's very interesting to hear you, to hear you about the the process of this transmutation, but also on the possible economic, uh, uh, the economic possibilities. Во-первых, здравствуйте. Во-первых, хочу выразить искреннюю благодарность господину Гимитану. Well, first of all, good afternoon, and uh, from the very outset, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude uh, to Mr. Gimitan. Уважаемые дамы и господа. So, ladies and gentlemen. Сегодня здесь, в Женеве, представляется широкой публике открытие и технология, имеющие без всякого преувеличения эпохальное значение. Суть открытия и технологии состоит в том, что создан промышленно применимый способ преобразования одних химических элементов в другие элементы и их изотопы. Мы представляем трансмутацию без ядерных реакторов, без тяжелой воды, и других подобных вещей, которые применяют сегодня для трансмутации элементов. Мы представляем трансмутацию химических элементов и их изотопов биохимическим методом. Our approach to transmutation, the transmutation of chemical elements, is uh, biochemical in nature. Экономическое и цивилизационное значение этого открытия и технологии еще только предстоит оценить. It is uh, still too early to fully grasp the economic and civilizational significance of this development and technology. По сути, данным изобретением, точнее будет сказать, революцией, Открывается новая эра в технологиях человечества. Несмотря на всю невероятность, это свершившийся факт. Unlikely, uh, as it may sound, this is a fact. Авторы этого открытия и технологии, выдающиеся русские ученые и химики, Тамара Сахно и Виктор Курашов. Это ученые теоретики и ученые практики, представители династии исследователей, совместными усилиями открывшие этот способ преобразования химических элементов. Who uh, stand on the shoulders of a 
dynasty of researchers who have, uh, uh, who have been instrumental in discovering these methods uh, for the transformation of chemical elements. Человечество в лице авторов открыло этот способ трансмутации материи, который изменит облик современного мира, возможно так, как его изменило применение электричества, а возможно и глубже. Perhaps uh, as deeply as it was changed by the use of electricity, perhaps even deeper. Результаты этой революции повлияют на энергетику, медицину, промышленность и, возможно, послужат созданию новых отраслей промышленности. The repercussions of this revolution will be felt in the energy sector, medicine, industry, and perhaps would also open up new industries, brand new industries. Это будет иметь огромный гуманитарный эффект. Самое главное, это уже готовый промышленный способ, с помощью которого через несколько месяцев можно получить промышленную продукцию. Is capable of producing uh, target products in industrial quantities in a matter of months. This means that the Russian military doesn't need to wage any war for rare earth metals, like the NATO alliance has been doing in Africa, and what United States is planning to do in Afghanistan. The Russian patent RU2563511 awarded to Mrs. Tamaris Ono and Mr. Viktor Kurashov says that the process leads to obtaining polonium, radon. Francium, radium, actinium, thorium, protactinium, uranium, neptunium, americium, nickel, manganese, bromine, hafnium, ytterbium, mercury, gold, platinum, and their isotopes. The invention allows to obtain valuable radioactive elements to carry out the inactivation of nuclear waste from the conversion of waste radioactive isotopes of elements into stable isotopes. What this means is, all wars for resources could be rendered unnecessary and obsolete in just a matter of months, when every raw material needed to feed existing and new industries, can be manufactured on demand and in a much larger scale, through biochemical process. The offensives to starve the beast, of course, did not end with the Chinese and Russians. The Iranians already have a working plasma technology for energy generation and material production. No wonder, even the new United States administration is threatening to withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal, you know, to extract as much concessions as possible. What the China-Russia-Iran triumvirate is doing right now is to give the Western energy companies and the deep state military-industrial complex itself, enough time to transform and undergo a complete retooling process within their existing infrastructures, towards more peaceful pursuits, like the full implementation of cheaper and safer nuclear power plants, and space explorations, respectively, for everyone's benefit. This transition phase towards free energy system and materializer technologies is a necessary step before the total eradication of the control matrix and the freedom of the individual can happen organically, when the individual himself is ready and capable. One must understand that the release of these long-suppressed knowledge is guaranteed to alter the belief system of the individual, when one begins to fully grasp his true relationship with the same energy that keeps him alive. The entire scarcity-based paradigm will crumble, and all deity worships will see their demise in favor of the wiser nurturing of our mother nature. Everyone will then start to understand the oneness of all, and all the present complications are seen as just one great comedy of errors. We will provide you with more details about how the deep state is being confronted and neutralized, in our next episode. You're watching the Covert Hybrid World War 3 series, an exclusive documentary about the ongoing war between hegemony and multipolarity. This is brought to you by Covert Geopolitics at www.geopolitics.co. Don't forget to like, share and comment as sensible and civil as you can. 
If you can see the significance of what we do, you can support us through www.patreon.com/geopolitics. Thank you for watching.